Hello, in this video I'm going to show you how to install XAMPP. So before I get started, I want to mention that I do have another video uh, that walks you through the process of installing XAMPP and how to get it up and running and test that it's running, right? So testing some actual PHP on it. Uh, if that's more what you're looking for, then I do have another video for that. This is going to be just a straight install of XAMPP. I also want to mention that uh, I'm going to go through the way that this should work and then I'm going to go through some ways to troubleshoot if it doesn't work well for you. To be clear, I don't have all the answers, but I do have some suggestions because I have a lot of experience with it. So I'm going to start off just in a Google search, and I'm going to search for XAMPP. XAMPP is a piece of software that you can run locally on your machine to turn your computer into a web server. Uh, sometimes people refer to it as a test bed because uh, you can use it to write uh, server-side code that's going to run on your computer. You've got options. I'm going to go through XAMPP and let's show you how this should work. Again, I'm going to do the quick way, just showing you how this should work. Should work for probably 90% of people. Uh, at the end, I'm going to talk a little bit more about what you might be able to do if you're not one of those 90%. Alright, so here I am. Uh, so notice you've got this kind of making the choice for you right here. I'm not going to do that because I know better. And I'm not saying that that wouldn't work. I think for most people, just clicking on that, downloading it, installing it would probably work. But just based on my experience, I've had better luck here where you're going to go find other versions. So what I'm looking for is the zip version as opposed to the executable. Um, so I'm going to just go in here because I want to I want to know more about it. You see, when we start digging in here, uh, we get to see a little bit more about the options. Uh, and also, I'd like to point out that you see right here that it's available for Mac, Linux, and Windows, which is one of the reasons that this is a great piece of software. Let's check out the uh, Windows options. And we've got different versions here, as you can see. I'm going to use that build so it looks like it's the most widely used. I'm not trying to tell you what version to use because in a week it could be a different version. right? I don't know. So I'm looking for a portable version and I'm looking for a zip. Um, so notice there's like there's installers and, and notice the file extension on that is exe. This right here seems like the popular one I can see right there. That is also an installer. I can tell you from experience that you don't want the installer. You want the zip. The reason you want the zip is the way that it installs, uh, it does relative path names is how I understand it. So I'm going to use a zip version. None of these are super quick. I mean, they all were going to take, I mean, they could take up to an hour. It doesn't matter how you do it. So I'm going to save this file, and then I'm going to put the video on pause, and, and then I'll come back. So I'm actually going through this process. I'm not doing this the easiest way. I'm trying to, trying to take my uh, best shot at getting this right. All right, so my download completed. That took me a couple minutes. I'm on a campus, and there's literally probably no one else on the entire campus network, so things are pretty fast for me. Uh, it took me a couple minutes. It might take you a lot longer. So let me go view my downloads. I also want to... Just kind of reiterate something I said a minute ago, and that is I wasn't overly concerned with what build I was getting because uh, these things change over time, and I'm not trying to make a specific tutorial as of today as much as I am just a general process. So there's the file. Um, just to kind of prove a point here about how this, how, how you can make this work, I'm going to copy that, and I'm going to put it on the flash drive. You like my folder names. Sorry, I'm, I'm one operating one-handed here. It's hard. All right, so notice it's 173 megabytes. It's a pretty big file. It even takes a long time to copy. The reason I mention that is in a minute here, I'm going to be extracting. And when I extract, that very well could take like 10 or 15 minutes. Last time I did this, it did. Uh, I'm also putting this on a flash drive just to prove that this, this is a, not the easiest piece of software to install, but it can be installed to a flash drive if you use the portable version. Oops. Uh, so I'm going to extract all. 
Um, nothing too interesting here. I'm just going to press extract and you're going to see this is going to take a long time. There's a lot of files in here. Uh, again, I'm going to pause the video. So I also, I'm going to say it probably for the third time, I think, at this point, and that is I'm not doing this the easiest way I could have done it. The easiest way I could have done it was just to click on that that download or install link on the first page from XAMPP, and that works just fine for almost everybody. Now you see I'm having some issues. I'm sure it'll get started in a minute here. Um, but this little recipe that I've prepared for you right here is the most reliable way to get the installation to work. Oh, look at that. I need to clear out some space. So I will do that and I will pause the video and I'll be back and I'll tell you roughly how long it took to extract. You can see it's it's almost it's almost a gig. All right, so just to be clear about what is happening, that flash drive I was trying to use actually didn't have enough space on it, which is why it was sitting there doing nothing. So I just started uh, on a on a new flash drive. Same thing, I just copied it over and I started extracting. You can see it says it's going to take about 16 minutes. So we're talking start to finish here about 20 minutes. It's not a real uh, short process of installation. So do understand that because sometimes you worry maybe that uh, things aren't working right, but this is a big piece of software. It's pretty complex. It takes a, it takes a while to install. If you were doing the installer, which is the other option, it's it still takes a long time. It doesn't really save you much. All right, so I'm gonna pause it and we'll be back when I get this finished. All right, so that took a while. That actually took more than 20 minutes. I should have written down the time on my clock when I started, but I didn't. The little uh, timer kind of jumped around a lot. I, th I think that probably took about 30 minutes. Anyways, end result is this. So that's the thing that I downloaded. This is the program that I just unzipped. And so I'm going to open that folder. I'm going to open that folder. And if I want to run XAMPP, uh, as you can see, there was nothing to in. There was no. There was no installation. I just unzipped a big file. And so if you want to start XAMPP, you should be able to just. You can run that program. Sorry, I've got split screens. I have to drag stuff around. Okay, so sorry, it's everything pops up on my other screen as always. So that's what XAMPP looks, or more accurately, that's what the control panel looks like. So that's one thing. Now, really, the question is, can I run Apache and can I run my SQL? So I'm gonna start Apache. All right, that didn't work. Start. All right, so this is a weird part in the video because I had to do a little bit of troubleshooting, but that's kind of my entire motivation for this. Like I said, I have another video where I go through a quick install and everything works smoothly. So what I did, just to show, I trust me, it took me like an hour to copy and paste some things, um, but mostly because I have this undersized flash drive. But anyways, here's that. I had to delete the old zipped file. Don't worry about that. I extracted it, I created this, all right, so, sorry, you're just going to have to follow me on this. I don't, this is only a one gig flash drive, and I kind of just screwed up screwed up in the beginning. So, when I, uh, you saw this a minute ago, but when I extracted this, this folder right here, this XAMPP folder, was in this folder. And that just doesn't work. The rules of this game is that this XAMPP folder, with all of that stuff in it, and that's where that... Uh, that control panel and the start file comes from, that stuff has to be up at the root level, right? So what I did is I cut it and pasted it from inside of this weird named folder with the version name and such, and I pasted it up into here. That was the fix. You can't run this from a subdirectory. So I didn't show that because the copying and pasting to a flash drive of those large files took a long time. Probably, I don't know how long it took, probably 45 minutes or something. But anyways, I took out the folder called XAMPP and I put it right here. Now I head in here. Now I attempt to open up the control panel and I start Apache. And if it goes green, 
and you'll see it'll things will stop spinning i am now running apache and another and so i mean that's that's really what you're trying to do with this tool at some point you're going to run going to want to run uh mysql probably as well because that's one of the things you would want out of xamp i mean that's really what you want is you want an apache server uh so you can process your php and you probably want mysql so you can work with a mysql database so that was everything I needed to do to get XAMPP up and running. It wasn't real straightforward. And if you remember, I've said it a couple times now, this video is intended for those of you that had probably a not straightforward installation, right? You tried installing it, it didn't work for some reason or another, and, and you're, you're watching this video trying to figure out how do you fix things. So the only snag that I encountered in the process was that I had to remove that folder, Notice, notably this, this XAMPP folder, I had to move that up to the root, right? By default, it's in here. It's not going to run from there. So I had to cut it and paste it to right here. Let's just talk about a couple other things just, just to try and help you out. So, so if you're doing it this way, um, hopefully that works. A couple things that you should just know is that XAMPP is a pretty heavyweight piece of software. Some of the reasons you might not be able to install it, might not be able to run it, are that uh, it conflicts with other programs that you might have running on your computer in the background. Right? There's a lot of things going on. There's ports allocated. There's so many conflicts that could happen. One thing that I'm aware of that can cause conflicts with XAMPP is Skype. So definitely you need to quit Skype, like completely get out of Skype before you try and run XAMPP, before you try and install XAMPP. The other thing that I want to just talk about for a minute is notice that I did this on a flash drive. I think it's possible, because I've worked with enough people through the years that have had some issues, it's possible that you might not be able to install XAMPP on your computer. Now, if you had a fresh computer just out of the box, I have no doubt that you could install XAMPP on that computer. But the thing is, you're probably not, this is probably not the first piece of software that you're installing on your computer, and that's where the conflicts come from. Anyone should be able to install this. But uh, sometimes you got conflicts, and sometimes you can't solve those so easily. Um, first thing I just want to say is that if you're having issues, try and figure out what you can and, and just do a quick Google search, see if there's a solution. If you can't figure it out on your own, I want to reiterate that this is on a flash drive. So here's how this fits in. If you can't get it installed on your computer, what I suggest you do is why don't you uh, go to another computer and try and install it on a flash drive on someone else's computer. If you, all right, if you have multiple computers in your house, that gives you multiple systems for you to try this on. If that doesn't work, maybe you can go to your school computer lab or a library or use a friend's machine, all right? Some kind of machine that doesn't have conflicts on it. And the idea is that if you can just get it installed on a flash drive one time, like I did here, then I can take this flash drive and then I can put that flash drive in other computers and it should work from there. So that's the reason I advocate for the flash drive is because you may very well have conflicts on your system, but if you can get this to install on just some computer, not even necessarily yours, then you should get a working copy of XAMPP. The other thing that I want to mention is way back a long time ago, remember there was the EXE and there was the ZIP? The EXE is a bad choice for this because uh, the, two diff the difference between the two installations is the zip one it uses all relative path names, if that means anything to you, as opposed to uh, absolute path names. So this little recipe that I did right here is good because what I mean by that is, notice that my uh, flash drive is E. It's entirely possible that I could put it in someone else's computer and it might come up as F or G or H, depending on how many devices are attached. When you use the zip installation, there's no E's or F's or G's. It's all relative to wherever this folder is. And so that's why I advocate for the zip archive. I've spent a lot of time in this video just talking your ear off because um, there's nothing more frustrating. Well, there probably is, but one of the more frustrating things you can run into is, a, is having a hard time installing XAMPP. So I'm just really trying to show you how you can get this done on a flash drive because it might just be the answer to some of the problems that you're experiencing. At the point where you can get to this point, I have no reason to think that it's not working. If you want to know how to really ensure that this is working and what to do with it, I've got another video on that subject. 
I hope that this video helps you to solve a few of your XAMPP woes in the event that you are experiencing some. So it's a pretty long video, longer than I'd like, but uh, this is the best I can do to give a little bit of help to those of you out there that are looking for it. So hope I helped some of you out. Thanks for watching.